The 60 Minutes interview is out, friends. I watched the whole thing just because I wanted to I wanted to give a nice reminder to myself as we go in to actually cast our ballots here. Nice reminder of just how fake the fake news really is. I mean, how, what a bunch of frauds they actually are. That's what I want us all to know. And it also raised some questions for me, like, what does it take to become a 60 Minutes correspondent? And you just got to be, is it like Biden? You just got to be around forever and never want to give up power, never want to stop hoarding the you know, productive positions and resources of society. You know, me, 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 until you get to be 100. Is that, is that how it works? I just, I'm just wondering. Leslie Stahl, what does this person know about anything? You know, what, what exactly am I supposed to be impressed by here? She, it's, it's, she has the presentation. She's kind of like a poor man's Barbara Walters. Is that it? Or maybe Barbara Walters is a poor man's Leslie Stahl. I don't know. But, you know, this, uh, this sort of grand dame of the mainstream news or whatever. What is, you know, it says Katie Couric, but she was younger. I'm trying to think. There's a few others that are in this category, too. But why does anyone listen to them? What do they do that makes someone think, oh, yeah, you know what I really care about? What the what the Leslie Stahl questions are in this one. Anyway, I, I'm <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. We see what happened. I think they put up the full interview now because Trump was threatening to put up the full interview. And it's a good thing that he did, because what you see is that Leslie Stahl was it's just horrible. The whole thing was awful. Every question is some is, a, is an attack on the president. She doesn't ask him, you know, what have you done that's positive about COVID and what would you do in the future? She says, how do you feel about the fact? I mean, I'm, I'm paraphr- you know, I'm, I'm giving you a, a version here, an exaggeration or whatever. But it's, it's some some type of uh, why are you the worst ever at dealing with COVID? Please discuss. Right. It always starts from a position of negativity toward the president. He picks up on this. He's very he's very aware of it. And uh, here you go. Here's here's what President Trump says to her. Play two. Yeah, I wish you would interview Joe Biden like you interview me. It would be so good. You know what? You the, like this, the, I thought. I thought you liked it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But when I watch him walk out of his store and he's walking with a ice cream and the question the media asks him, what kind of ice cream, what flavor <laughs> ice cream do you have? And he's in the midst of a scandal. He's not. And he's taking... He's of course not. he is, no. Leslie. Come on. Of course he is. It's the biggest, second biggest scandal. So, the biggest scandal was when they spied on my campaign. They spied on my well, campaign. There's Leslie. no e- real evidence of that. Of course there is. No. It's all over the place. Leslie, Sir, they spied on my campaign and they got I, caught. Can I say something? You know, this is 60 Minutes, and we can't put on things we can't no, verify. You won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on you. things we can't verify. Leslie, they spied and, on my campaign. Well, we can't verify that. It's been that. totally verified. No. It's been just go down and get the papers. They spied on my campaign. They got caught. No. And then they went much further than that, and they got caught. And you will see that, Leslie, and you know that, but you just don't want to no. put it on the air. No, as a matter of fact, I don't know that. Okay. So what does she know? Has she been asleep for the last four years? What do we call the, the attorney general of the United States, sitting attorney general, said that there was spying on the campaign. The highest law enforcement officer in the United States, yes, there was spying on the Trump campaign. Remember that? The whole Bill Barr, oh my gosh, he said spying. And he goes, yeah, it's called spying. That's what happened. Does she not know that? Oh, we can't verify. We can't put things on that we can't verify. This is a, this is a, new, a new trick, a new tool in the fake news media uh, toolkit where they just, when they don't want to talk about something, they pretend that you can't really verify. And, and this, this really does go to what you'll have with, uh, with the most extreme conspiracy theorists. He, here's a really easy way for conspiracy theorists to argue everything. You know, I'll say, guys, come on. You know, the country wasn't founded by, uh, founded by you know, lizard people from the planet Zargon. Uh, the country was actually founded by the founding fathers, George Washington. They'll say, yeah, were you there? Do you, do you show me a photograph? Do you know? What proof do you have? And, and normal people understand that this is insane, but Democrats do a version of this now. Oh, well, we can't report on the Hunter Biden emails because we, we haven't, we, we don't have the hard drive ourselves, or we can't verify that it's not 
Russian disinformation. Um, well, then try. Your job is to verify things. Like, what, what do you mean you can't verify this? But the, the Democrats did this as well. It's, it's deeply intellectually disingenuous, but this is what they do. The Democrats did this, you remember, with uh, under the Obama administration when there were a lot of mass casualty terror attacks that would happen. Remember all those ISIS-inspired attacks? San Bernardino massacre, the Pulse nightclub mass shooting, uh, mass murder. There were these big attacks that happened. And the people who did them, I mean, in the case of uh, the Pulse nightclub, it was that guy, Omar Mateen. He's on the phone. He's like, I am doing this for ISIS. I am doing this for Jihad and for Allah. And then the Obama FBI, this should have been a big tip off, right? Oh, the FBI. Yeah, it was the Obama FBI. The Obama FBI redacted parts of the transcript for things like, I pledge allegiance to redacted. Why? We, we, we all know what he's saying, you know? I am doing this in support of my brothers and sisters in redacted. And we, they would do this thing of, we may never know the real motive. Remember that game? We may never know the real motive. Okay, well, we'll really, really extrapolate that one out. Really go with that for a minute. Can you ever really know the real motive? Can you know the real motive if somebody confesses on video and says, I did this because of, you know, X, Y, and Z? Maybe they're lying. Doesn't matter what proof you have. You can't get inside that person's head. You can never know the real motive. But notice they only do this when they don't want to talk about radical Islam and jihad because the Obama administration was running around bowing to the Islamic world, begging forgiveness for all of the bad stuff America has done. You remember that? So then it it didn't look good when they were coming, when when they were inspired, I should say, within our own country to murder their fellow human beings in the name of a political entity known as ISIS. That was a bunch of head chopping, women raping, evil murderers who all deserve to die in a pink mist, courtesy of the United States military. Thank you very much to those men and women serving who were part of that effort. So. You can always play this game. We may never know the real motive. And Leslie Stahl, 60 Minutes Correspondent, we can't verify that. Well, if you're going to say that there's such a thing as Russian disinformation that looks at Russian disinformation that plants the laptop, gets to, uh, you know, gets to Hunter Biden's private photos, learn, knows all of his contacts, puts all the email. I mean, yeah, you can always say, oh, it's a super deep fake. This is like people that talk about moon landing stuff, right? Oh, it's, it's all a deep fake. Usually you laugh at them. The Democrats are now the actual conspiracy theorists, you see, when they have facts and evidence that goes against. Here's Leslie Stahl. We can't verify. We can't verify your campaign was spied on. OK, other than the mountains of evidence provided by congressional investigation, as well as by the attorney general of the United States, who also stated openly that, yes, there was spying. Can't verify that, though. She makes it sound like we're not going to air that on TV. She's a partisan lib imbecile. But she plays her part, you know, probably makes two, three million dollars a year to show up there. And and is not a very good interviewer. Another part of this, just not very good at this. That's one thing that I've always found so interesting. I mean, Brian Stelter, I'll never forget this guy. The one time he had me on on his show, he tried to come at me. This is when I was a CNN contributor years ago. Tried to come at me on some issue of terrorism uh, and and how I knew that something was Radical Islam versus, you know, it it was actually a version of we may never know the motive. Brian Stelter wanted to ambush me on his show about we may never know the motive. And it's like, okay, Brian, I actually have expertise in this area and got about 15 to 20 IQ points on you. So good luck with this one. And he looked very foolish in the interview. They never even told me they just cut it out of the show. It was a pre-tape. They just cut it out of the show. It was on a Friday. They cut it out for Sunday. But I also remember this guy. I've I had never seen anyone at that point who had his own show on cable news with the exception of uh, Ronan Farrow who looked like, you know, a lost kindergartner, like, I've got my own show, look, MSNBC. Uh, I've never seen somebody with such uh, unbelievable lack of TV skills, basic TV skills, reading off a prompter, interviewing, asking questions, who had their own show, their own show on cable news. It was remarkable, right? Uh, That was Brian Stelter. There are others like that, too. Who the moment they don't have a staff of, I mean, some of these CNN shows have 20, 30 people working on the staff, you know, sending them research, writing all their questions or whatever. Uh, the moment that's gone, all of a sudden you go, is this person even very well informed? Is this person particularly bright? The answer is no. But they've played the game. 
They do what they're supposed to, and they rise anyway. It's all smoke and mirrors, friends. There's so much of this in the mainstream media, so much of this in the mainstream news divisions of, of all these different networks. Basically, the, the elevation of uh, highly self-involved, narcissistic, uh, Democrat dumbasses into positions where we're all supposed to go, oh, well, they're the height of journalism. Yeah, you mean like Dan Rather? You mean like Brian Williams? You mean like Katie Couric? Like Leslie Stahl? A- any of these people impressive to you? I'm just a, just, a, just a lowly syndicated radio host, man, and on a general test of knowledge of politics or anything else, you know these people would get smoked, right, by yours truly. And it wouldn't even be close. It'd be embarrassing for them. Why exactly do we have to listen to them? Why does 60 Minutes get access to the president? Because of the, the pomp and circumstance around the storied 60 Minutes. It's all just for show, friends. It's not real. No real ethics, no real integrity. And you saw that with this Leslie Stahl thing. And they, they weren't going to air the whole thing, but they realized what position, what chance did they have here? Trump and all conservatives should do this. And it's, it's a note for me, too. I always want a copy. If I'm ever going into hostile territory again, uh, I want a copy of the whole thing. Now, Bill Marshall, for example, that's live. So live is a little bit different. Live is live. Um, but if you're doing a taped interview, you absolutely have to tape it yourself as a conservative. Otherwise, you get the Daily Show treatment, but they do that to you on actual news shows, right? The Daily Show got away with it because they were uh, a left-wing propaganda show with jokes, but they'll do that to you on 60 Minutes. They'll cut it up, and they'll do this to every Republican politician. They did it to the president himself, but he had a copy of it, so they had to show us the whole thing because otherwise their edited version versus the actual interview would show what a bunch of frauds they are, so they got caught, so they had to edit, and, and they could not air it, right? That would look even worse. So they put the whole thing out there and Leslie Stahl looks like a a crybaby left wing idiot, idiot, honestly, no different in her political sensibility or awareness of the world around her or sense of fairness. than you know, we might as well have had, uh, you know, Deborah Messing or uh, Suzanne. What's her name? The one uh, I can't even remember her name, right? You know, the actress that's always out there to all these idiot actresses that go out there that are lecturing us on politics all the time, especially of that generation, you know, Jane, Jane Fonda. You might as well have had Jane Fonda do this interview. It would have been the same interview with Trump. Well, why don't you stop making people, you know, go to your rallies and make them? Why don't you make them wear masks? Well, we're going to have mask mandate where you, we're going to have people forcefully remove them from his rallies. Is that really what's supposed to happen? Friends, the fake news media thinks that if Biden wins, it's all going to go back to normal. They don't understand. They have radicalized their opponents in the media. They have radicalized the opposition. I mean, CNN, the the only thing that can be done now is to nuke the site from orbit, so to speak, just to be sure. There's, There's no bringing these places back as they currently are configured. You need massive overhauls of leadership, of talent, of mission, all of it. These places are effectively enemy combatants on the ideological battlefield, and that's not going to change in the Biden administration, and we're not going to forget that. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button, so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from The First, please click subscribe.